Okay, so unit wise and hero wise, let's see what we got here. Lots of glaives. There's actually three glaives on the attack. This is interesting. Three glaives. There's two pole axes. There's a longbow. There's a pike. There's a musket and a longsword as well on the def on the attack there. On the defense, so we've got mauls. A one longsword as well. Plenty of short swords here. One nadachi. We know how strong the Dachi is going to be once the runes are involved here um, eventually. Uh, and then you've got plenty of pike players here. Four pike players on that side here. Um, we have unit wise though, lots of cavalry for the YAA boys. Lots of cavalry. Lots of it. Jav calves, armor gears, cataphracts in there as well. Um, you've got flamers, you've got Fort Abrasho, IPGs, Iron Reapers, Zykelia Militia. Um, so they're going to look at be doing a lot of rotations around the inside here with their cavalry by the looks of it. There's a decent amount of cavalry as well on the attack, but not as much. But they've got modales, lots of pikes and halberdiers, um, and even palace guards and whatnot as well. So this is going to be an interesting strategy here, what they do. It will be very interesting battle, this one. So this is Triarchy, game one versus YAA, Hidden City. Get your predictions in, guys. Get the predictions in. Who do you think is going to be here? Who's going to be the winning side of this one? And get your points involved. Get as many as you can. The rack up them points. And guys, we're at 69 viewers. Holy oh, giggity. Giggity. Where's the 100 viewers, guys? So we need to push that. Let's get this, this 100 viewers up here. Let's get that follower kit up as well, guys. If you haven't already, hit that follow button. There's a nice purple button just below the stream here. If you hit that purple button there, I really, really do appreciate every single one of these followers. And it means you guys are enjoying the content. And that's what we want to see. All the runes are off. We're all good with that. We don't have to worry about that. And then now, we're going to get up. They're all looking as if they're not going cavalry. But all of a sudden, are they going away? They switch it out. Get all cav. Because they're all... Oh my god, my thing with this lagging so much. Look at all this cav. All of the cav is coming. It's all coming. The Triarchy boys, are they going to know what hit them here? There comes the cav. And here comes the unit. The Trebs coming in. Is it going to hit them in time? The Hawatcha is firing. And the Trebs are incoming. But none of the units are coming in. It's just heroes. They waited. They waited for the Treb before the units started following them. And now... The units follow outside here. You've got lots of units trying to make their way here for Abrasio IPGs all fighting out here outside. Loads of cavalry and all I see is stuttering frame issues here. All I see. Cav dominating the battlefield here. All around. You have YAA getting off the first kill here. Sicilius Invictus falls to his death. He's the first to die but lots of cav. Lots of cav and IBGs have been using their marches and stuff as well, and the, there's another march avoided here by Javcav here, and they're just going to be able to wet it down. Once that Javcav's done, they'll walk around the side of the IPGs and take out so many units in terms of this things here as well. Hero-wise, they've got two heroes advantage here on the defense, and they're they're just they're just capped the supply point already as well. Wingro falls down, but he is getting capped. The hero, couple of heroes up top trying to avoid that cap here, but the Cav are dealing damage. There, there's not that many in terms of the like, units difference though, like we're still 102 versus 217, uh, but for the most part, the leadership side of things is definitely in favour of the YAA here at this point. Leadership advantage uh, from the side layout has helped. The, the Javcast still going to come down and do some work around here. Beowulf falls, he's deaf here for CB's died as well. Uh, Scabies is on a hat trick of heroes already. And then you just got a fight going on at the supply point now here. Another hero falls, he's dead. Polax will be the next one to go here. Crazy Kilby is going to fall to his death here with all these heroes fighting him. He survived a good amount of time there, but that is him down. Now there's only a couple of heroes. A's getting taken. Scabies is like, right, I'm going to go and protect that with my life for a little bit. I'm a short shot. I'll do what I need to do here. And he gets on point. His palace guards brace around him. He just stands on point with his short sword, holding up that block. Ready to stop the cap, but he will fall to his death here. Scabies is picked up by Melius Invictus units, and A will get capped here, but they have the far left siege tower up on the wall here from Triarchis. It's very sporadic. There are still lots of units of cavalry roaming around here, trying to deal damage to everybody that's brand new spawning in with units. They're going to have to spawn on this side, because if you're spawning here, you might lose your unit before you even get a chance to use it. 
With A being capped here though, YAA will they change their strategy? The guys are starting to make their way up onto the wall. There's a plenty of pure heroes out there, but they're already capping B. Very quick push there. Kayun doing a good bit of work there. They got the sub inside supply point, but they have the hero advantage in terms of numbers that are inside the city at this moment in time. But that's going to be a quick rotation here from the Cav. And that's it. A couple of heroes fall to their death. A little bit bigger falling down, but we're 15 on the attack available versus 13 on the defense. They've got units in center here, but Anok done a good job there and killed off a few heroes there. Sephos units is killing more people here as well. But it's, it's definitely all over the place at this moment in time. And the hero wise inside, they're getting units out and they're trying to get their infantry to stop these pushes of Cav because there's plenty of Cav on the defense. I feel like people are just memeing on them. Um, on Tree at this moment in time, but YAA might actually like struggle here with if uh, if the units of infantry get to where they need to be quick enough, then they're going to have the advantage here because there's too much cav going about, and that cataphract charge is going to come in from the back here and goes through the unit of palace guards here. Plenty of cross charges coming in. Plenty of cross charges coming in here from YAA all around the battlefield here. I'm going to have to go a little bit higher. Because we gotta see more. There's so much going on. Unit wise, 660 on the attack. They're losing a lot more so far. 200 more units to precise, and their heroes are dying a lot quicker here. But they've capped quite quite a bit of B. If somebody could get onto B now, you know, they could have they could have had that supply point and pushed out from there. But the cav, the overwhelming cav cross charges has been a great job from YAA. It's done well. The infantry that they had out in Triarchus side didn't do strong enough ever and uh, to anti cav or to even stop the the cav charges from different directions. The modal it wasn't enough of it there. There weren't any IPG marches going off um, at the right times, I think, as well. And that's making a difference here. For a brash show, they're all individual heroes and they're gonna get wiped out slowly if they don't get if they get noticed here beforehand. The Fort Abrasio are still moving around and they're just gonna get picked off from the heroes in the back there. They're, they're not gonna get the chance to use them if they do it, things like that. Um, down to ten hero kill, uh, heroes alive here. For Triarchy, YAA is just making sure they wipe as many of them as they can on that point of the supply point there because that's stopping their cav and then getting units. So she is still staying alive as a dual blade in the back here. Plenty of people fighting in the back here as well. Malias and Victus fighting here at the glaive. But plenty of people dealing plenty of damage there. So you've got malls, a couple of malls and a dachi and a short sword. You know, too much going on there. Too much going on. Um, did they ever get the gate closed? No, they didn't. They didn't even get the gate closed. Gate is still wide open here, but they can still close it. They can still close it if they wanted to. Why would we give themselves that extra little bit of time? They would definitely give themselves that extra little bit of time. Got plenty of cav outside here. So you got calf racks all sitting outside waiting for their opportunity. There's armagers there as well. And then all of the heroes that are inside the walls, for the most part, are all red. <laughs> they are all YAA's teams as they start to make their move in and their push is coming in through the gateway here from Triarchy. They're making it in, they're in and out, in and out. A little bait and switch for the inside gate. As they come in, they're going to go to the far right supply point here. So tab, right supply. They are now pushing to tab, right supply and seeing where they can go from here. They start to make their effort around as the guys from YAA and the other supply point from tab left are coming around in the back, ready to counter a calf charge and come back from behind. You've got a unit of uh, Modal and Fort Abrasio in there, so they're ready to move forward towards the units that are pushing in from Triarchy. Triarchy is trying to get in two different directions here. They bring their calf in. Victus is trying to cap B as all this goes on. All this mayhem is going on. He was able to cap B and keep cap up in B while these fights are going on, but they're down to 400 units on the attack. They have the hero advantage here. They've got a couple of heroes extra here. As it goes down to 12v12, now they're going to get pushed on the point. Invictus is going to start to get the point taken away from him here. As the boys start to go back to the supply point, trying try to go home. But home will not be capable because B is not one yet. So they all went to home maybe a little bit too early. Preemptively went to home thinking that he was going to get the B cap. But Victus has still managed to survive it here. He's still managed to get on and cap. 
Jean of Arc is trying to defend that for his life. But car chargers come and run from the whole main su home supply point. They're going to come through and try and run over the top of each other. It's a cav v cav charge over the B point here. Cav v cav, cav frack. And then here comes the Armagers here as well, which are surely on the follow me. But the Flamers are doing the damage to stop the cab. And all of a sudden, the car that was coming in from Triarchy looked like it was going to be a big send, send of a life sender to Cat B. And so far, the Flamers did their work. Here comes another unit of Cat Frats coming through from the YA guys on defence. And lots of YAs now mounting up on the tab right side. As the Triarchy boys are slowly dying here, it is 12v9. There's only 200 units left on the attack now. And they're going to struggle here for a push in the last five minutes. We're so close to capping. But the heroes are falling one by one here. And we're down to four heroes alive. Shu and Melissa. Invictus and Sirius Invictus. They're all going to get picked off here as the heroes of YAA start to make their way out of the, wa uh, the walls towards them and cap the supply point back. They're starting to make their way around. 196 units left though. Not really much they can do about this. That little cap charge at the start definitely throws people off. When you have a sally out it makes it difficult unless you planned for it. You might not know what you're doing. You, you might just get yourself in a fluster. And that might have been what happened here. They're down to one hero alive from Triarchy. And the boys of YAA are coming out and capping the supply point. Add an insult to injury here. Will they take out the one and only Sirius Invictus, who was the only hero alive at that point in time? All four of them, though, that are spawning in. They're all spawning on the right, correct side. They're, they're over on the far left side. Um, tab left. Siege Tower ready. To mount an attack. I don't know what they're going to do. What unit wise they got. Because it looks like it's Martello Torre. Uh, Martello Torre. I mean you've got Palace. Oh no you didn't. No you don't. And everybody's starting to leave the battle. Oh, there we go. That is it. The boys on the attack have given up. They have forfeited the win there. They realise that is it. That is GG boys. We have lost this attack here. On the MVP though. Kuyun gets MVP on the attack. It's a failing attack. However... 3 hero kills, 85 unit kills, the most kills on the team for the attackers was Sirius Invictus with 5, following closely Melissa Invictus with 4 hero kills. Um, unit wise, the highest was, we weren't, weren't any into the hundreds yet. Uh, on the defense, so MVP is Kara. Uh, Kara comes in with 126 unit kills and 7 hero kills as well. 7 hero kills matching Cold Death here as well with 7, and then you also have Scabies down here with 6. So. A good fight, all in all, 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 a very good defence from YAA. They win this one uh, quite convincingly in terms of the amount of cav they have. It was a bit interesting, but they definitely used that to their advantage. They whittled down units, really like really good tier units to the start of the battle. Um, just with Javcaf, for example. A little few units of uh, cataracts in there that did help, um, but the hero kills, once again, is, is so dominant. If, you, if you're killing heroes quicker... Um, then they're killing your heroes, man. You, you have an advantage. You're, you, you're looking at like double or sometimes triple the hero kills. Then if you don't win that batch up and you've got that much, there's something wrong. Like you, you, Your hero kills definitely make a difference. They're, they're going to lose their unit. The unit are unable to fight in that battle. Once your hero falls, they've got a sort of certain time period that they can cancel and send that unit away. But you can whittle that unit down quickly. Take out heroes and units, and before they know it, they've lost 10 of them before they start the next battle in that push. And you, you're not.